As we all know, the SCP Foundation secures, contains, and protects the various anomalies under its custody. But their mission isn't limited to just grabbing the object and chucking it into a containment locker at the bottom of a classified site deep below the surface of the Earth. The Foundation wants to get a comprehensive, full understanding of all the strange items, creatures, and humanoids in its custody. Because that's the only way to understand what they're capable of, what danger they pose, and how to effectively contain them. That much is logical. But the problem is that there's no global scientific community surrounding anomalies, at least not ones willing to cooperate with the Foundation. Perhaps the Chaos Insurgency or Global Occult Coalition have some scientists who have studied anomalies, or the various government agencies that know about the anomalous world like the Unusual Incidents Unit or Soviet GRUP. But for the most part, the Foundation is utterly alone when it comes to figuring out how these anomalies work, what they are, and how to combat them. So the Foundation does what any institution would do, <laughs> experiments. Many of the Foundation's most important and iconic anomalies are defined by the experiments the white-coated scientists have performed on them, sometimes even using human subjects through the notorious and infamous D-Class program. Everyone knows about how SCP-682, the hard-to-destroy lizard, has been subjected to practically every known weapon and attack under the sun in an attempt to kill the highly dangerous, hateful predator. And who can forget SCP-914, the clockworks, and the countless objects the Foundation has put through it on its five settings to see what it spits out. Needless to say, the Foundation's experiments are incredibly important to how the organization functions, so those SCPs that can offer lots of testing options are very treasured and prized along with being iconic and legendary throughout the Foundation. Today, we're going to be looking at one such anomaly, but not a dangerous, hostile, man-eating predator like SCP-682, or a mysterious eldritch machine like SCP-914. No, today we're going to be looking at something much more simpler than that. A coffee machine. Yes, today we're going to be inspecting SCP-294, affectionately referred to by guards and personnel as the coffee machine. Though you probably don't want to order a hot cup of joe in this coffee machine lest you, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. The first thing you see when you open the SCP-294 file is its number, of course. Item 294, object class Euclid. The next thing you see is the image. If you were imagining a tiny little coffee maker before, this should get rid of that. SCP-294 is big, the kind of coffee machine you'd see in a factory break room. It's almost the size of a vending machine, and has a big colored window showing a few cups of coffee, along with the slots for cash and coins so drinkers can pay for their espressos. But the most notable feature on SCP-294 is the full keyboard on the front panel. It's a typical QWERTY keyboard, just like yours, with a spacebar and everything. Why on earth would a coffee machine need a keyboard? The special containment procedures paint an interesting picture, by which we mean there aren't any. SCP-294 doesn't need any special procedures, secret rituals, or complex machines to keep it contained. But it's still Euclid. So only personnel who have security clearance of level 2 or higher are allowed to interact with it at the moment. This is surprising, when you realize that SCP-294 is currently being held not in an anomalous item locker or containment cell, but exactly where you'd expect to find a big coffee machine, a break room. Specifically, the Site-19 second floor personnel break room. But it's not alone. It's monitored by two guards with level 3 clearance around the clock. For them, sitting in the break room all day guarding a coffee machine that can't move and is too heavy to lift has to be a pretty sweet gig, considering what other kinds of jobs are available at the Foundation. But all that raises even more mysteries. What the heck is up with this coffee machine? The description starts off obvious enough, affirmed that yes, SCP-294 is indeed a standard coffee vending machine, but with the difference we all noticed earlier. Instead of a simple button list of options, it has a full keyboard on it, each button aligning with the letter on a real keyboard. And when someone slips 50 cents into the coin slot, quite a bargain for coffee if you ask me, the user gets a message on screen prompting them to enter the name of what liquid they'd like. You type it in on the keyboard, and that's that. The machine drops a little paper cup, and a nozzle shoots out 12 fluid ounces of whatever you requested. Pretty nifty, isn't it? 
but it gets niftier. Most people would only think to ask a coffee machine for, well, coffee. But SCP-294 accepts any liquid, and some things that aren't liquids. When the Foundation initially got their hands on it, they ran no less than 97 tests on it, after they realized they weren't just limited to espressos and cappuccinos. At first, any kind of liquid you could drink was requested. The researchers popped in requests for water, coffee, beer, soda, milkshakes, and out they came. Then they decided to get a little more creative. They started to request things you couldn't possibly drink, not if you wanted to stay alive. Sulfuric and hydrochloric acid, like the kind SCP-682 is suspended in. Wiper fluid, motor oil. But SCP-294 stubbornly provided, even if the liquids would melt through the researchers' throats like a knife through butter. Then the researchers decided to apply some of their scientific knowledge. There are a lot of chemical compounds that don't usually exist in a liquid state on planet Earth's surface. They typed in nitrogen, iron, and glass, among others, and received shimmering liquids in paper cups. They sent them off to a lab for analysis and, wouldn't you know it, chemically identical to nitrogen, iron, and glass. But when they typed in diamond, no doubt wondering whether they'd found an infinite cash cow, they received an error message on the screen. It seemed that while SCP-294 could deliver substances that aren't usually in a liquid state on Earth's surface, it needed to be at least possible for the substance to be in a pure liquid form for SCP-294 to dispense it. Since diamond is only a mineral, it couldn't be dispensed. Then they tried to test something else, and got a slightly disturbing response on the small LCD display, out of stock. It stopped responding to requests for over an hour, then made a small noise and began to accept requests again. It appears that the machine can take about 50 requests before needing to take an hour and a half to restock itself. And while only the machine is anomalous, the small 12-ounce paper cups it dispenses its liquids in seems remarkably hardy. Substances that would have eaten through paper instantly, like the sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid, had no effect on these little cups though the same can be said for those that drank from them. One of the researchers had a great idea. Here was an anomaly that was practically harmless, and could be a great little way for the Foundation to scale back its budget a little bit. They proposed putting SCP-294 into the break room it currently resides in, both to more easily conduct experiments and to save money when agents and doctors came in for lunch and needed a quick drink, or in the mornings where everyone was looking for coffee to wake them up. With no good reason not to, the machine was put in the break room, but not long after, an unfortunate incident occurred, one with enough harm that it was deemed necessary that only personnel with security clearance interact with SCP-294. What could have happened to cause this? Did someone burn themselves on hot coffee? Did the vending machine accidentally crush someone? No. The reality is much darker. One morning in August of 2005, Agent Joseph, whose full name has been redacted to preserve their identity, went up to the vending machine in the break room, looking to get a hot cup of coffee to wake himself up between shifts. Another agent in the room who was on break at the time saw him and made a suggestion to find out what SCP-294 would do when given the colloquial name rather than the exact real name of a drink. They just wanted to see what would happen, so Agent Joseph slipped in two quarters and typed in a hot cup of Joe. Seconds after, he began sweating like a pig. He was feeling very hot, even though the break room was fully air-conditioned, and his skin began to flush. He then clutched his head, complaining that he was dizzy, and the whole room was spinning around before collapsing to the floor. The other agent immediately called the medical staff, who moved Agent Joseph to the infirmary and stabilized him. Once they made sure he wasn't in any real trouble, they also grabbed whatever SCP-294 had spit out. It was a disgusting, thick, reddish-brown liquid with a strong stench. And when they ran the labs on it, they confirmed it was exactly what they thought it was. A mixture of blood, tissue, bone marrow, cerebrospinal fluid, and other bodily fluids that was an exact DNA match for Agent Joseph. SCP-294 somehow managed to literally liquefy 12 ounces from the agent's body before producing them into a cup. This offered a clue, 
Maybe it stole the liquids it was asked for from the nearest source. In any case, the agent was released after a few weeks of bed rest and care to make sure he wasn't further injured, and both involved agents were reprimanded. With the knowledge of how accidentally dangerous SCP-294 can be, who can blame the Foundation for wanting to keep a careful lid on it? Researchers were curious, though and received clearance to test the SCP's abilities to retrieve specific liquids from long distances. With an O5's approval and oversight, they input a cup of SCP-075's secretion. SCP-075, the corrosive snail, is exactly what it sounds like, a gross little creature that secretes a highly caustic acid capable of melting almost anything. Without fail, the coffee machine dispensed the secretion into the cup and the cup stayed perfectly intact. But at the very same time, in SCP-075's cell, the creature woke up and began secreting acid that immediately disappeared. All in all, about 12 ounces, the same amount in the cup. Based off of these results, further testing with SCP-294 was approved. One researcher tried punching in a request for a cup of gold. What came out was a small paper cup of molten gold that quickly cooled to room temperature. Asking for cups of silver and platinum produced similar results, but based off of previous tests, it seemed clear that the machine wasn't creating precious metals so much as siphoning them off from somewhere else. The next request was a strange one, a cup of anti-water. The machine took a moment, then printed a small message on its LCD display, out of range. This confirmed that the machine couldn't produce substances that didn't actually exist, and couldn't break physics to get its materials by peering into alternate universes, dimensions, or realities. After that, the researchers tested for diamond and got the result that you already know of, an out-of-range error. Some more investigation showed that all solid substances that don't have a liquid form get this error, but asking for a cup of liquid carbon produced exactly that because liquid carbon isn't the same thing as a diamond, though both are made of carbon. SCP-294 clearly has more knowledge of chemistry than some of us. Then the researchers created an entirely new drink, made of bleach, various sodas, protein powders, and spices. They blended it together and put it in a jar across the room from SCP-294. When requested, the amount of the liquid in the cup was missing from the jar proving that SCP-294 doesn't actually create its own liquids. But how does SCP-294 react when presented with a more subjective request? One researcher asked for the best drink I've ever had. After a moment, the paper cup filled with something that looked like cola, but the researcher said it tasted like a drink he had years ago at a party and that he'd always remembered as his favorite drink, though he couldn't say what was in it. But that was a subjective test, and the researchers repeated it with a different subject. When an agent also requested the best drink I've ever had, the machine produced a simple Vienna lager with a label showing a group of people drinking it at the beach and no brand name. The agent confirmed that the best drink he ever had was a Vienna lager at the beach with his friends. So SCP-294 could not only read people's minds, it can read memories they don't even know they still have. Another one they tried was something Cassie will like, referencing SCP-085, the young girl who lived in a drawn-on world. The cup dispensed was completely empty, but it had a small drawing printed on the side of a soda glass with brown and white things floating on top of each other. The researchers presented the cup to Cassie and were told by her it was a chocolate banana milkshake and a delicious one at that. A cup of music was a strange request and produced an even stranger result. A clear, odorless carbonated drink that tasted vaguely alcoholic. When drunk, subjects said they could feel it and started showing an affinity to music, being able to sing and dance to a rhythm when they had no sense of rhythm or were tone deaf before. Whether SCP-294 can produce even more abstract concepts is still under study but was interrupted by the next test. An unfortunate containment breach incident at Site-19 left several personnel trapped in the break room, heavily injured while MTFs fought to re-establish control over the site. An agent typed in a cup of medical knowledge, and the machine quickly produced a green liquid. After drinking it, the agent was able to treat the injuries of their fellow personnel consistent with standard first responder practices. 
and was commended for their bravery, but their knowledge didn't stick around after the breach, and attempts to recreate the liquid failed. They decided that SCP-294 broke its own rules for self-preservation in the emergency, implying that it's not only sentient, it is intelligent. A doctor using SCP-294 made a request close to him, My Life Story. While nowhere close to a drink, SCP-294 seemed to accept the input, until it started shaking violently and making odd noises. It remained in this new state for about three minutes, then returned to normal, spitting out a completely opaque black fluid, like tar, in a cup. Despite the strange reaction, the doctor drank the fluid, and immediately informed the others he was now able to remember everything that had ever happened to him, from the smallest childhood event to the most important events in his adult life. He excused himself and disappeared into his office. The next time the staff saw him two days later, he was carrying an autobiography 600 pages long. Then the researchers decided to try their luck and input, surprise me. The resulting solution was a cup containing what seemed to be regular water, right until a researcher touched it. It was just water all right, but it had been superheated to 200 degrees Celsius while remaining in liquid form. The moment someone touched it, bang, it violently evaporated into steam, spraying boiling water everywhere. Not only does SCP-294 have intelligence, it has a sense of humor, albeit a quite rude one. The next three requests were for blood namely blood of the Smilodon, or saber-toothed tiger, of the passenger pigeon, and of founding father Thomas Jefferson. But the only thing SCP-294 produced were out-of-range errors, confirming it can't take liquids that don't exist anymore. But in the next test, blood was received from wolves, saliva was received from horses, urine was received from koalas, and cerebral spinal fluid was received from Phoebromus patersoni, a rodent that went extinct some 8 million years ago. Though if SCP-294 is working according to its own rules, it means that there may be still one in the wild somehow. For the next test, the researchers decided to get back to the scientific roots of it all. They made a request for a cup of D-151839's leukemia, knowing that the D-class in question had a very advanced case of cancer. The machine outputted it without any trouble, and analysis of the liquid showed it contained cancer cells that matched the D-class's DNA, but another request for the same spat out an out-of-range error. What's more, a medical checkup on the D-class revealed that their tumor was completely gone, but unfortunately, it was only a short-term fix. The cancer cells recurred within two weeks of the test. SCP-294 initially just seemed like a boring magic vending machine, but it was only after the extensive experimentation that you just saw a shortened log of that the SCP Foundation was able to discern its true nature. It wasn't an unthinking object. It was sentient, intelligent, and even a little sarcastic, though none of that stopped it from doing its job, providing people with a hot cup of whatever they needed to drink. Just make sure you type in your request very carefully. Now go watch How Not to Kill an SCP, SCP-1609 Remains of a Chair, and Living Ice Cream Van SCP-1386 for more oddly sentient objects and entities secured and contained by the SCP Foundation.